G'day, I'm Pete and you're watching Feral Fabrications. Today we're going to talk about the difference between D port, cylinder heads and intakes versus oval port or O port on the SXV6 engine. Why are we talking about this? Well, a few weeks ago a viewer pointed out to me that there was a good chance uh, that my engine was an O port uh, type engine. And I thought, oh, you know, that's unusual. It was sold to me as a D port uh, style. So I popped the carb off and tried to have a bit of a look down the uh, intake runners and actually noticed that there was a mismatch between the intake manifold and the cylinder heads. This engine has been running with an O-port uh, intake manifold and a D-port cylinder head. So it was a pretty good opportunity to fix that up and really port out an intake as well to get as much uh, air into the engine as possible. Before we can uh, remove the intake and install the new one we've got to pull a few things off it uh, so we can actually get it out easily. I've opted to remove the carburetor and also the throttle bracket entirely as opposed to leaving them on the intake. Um, it's a little bit of a squeeze to get it out in and out so yeah the more stuff you can pull off it the easier it makes the job. Valve covers have got to come off as well because uh, the intake manifold actually forms part of the rocker cover gasket and, and seals it all in there so we have got to take those off to be able to remove the intake. It's a satisfying sound. You can hear that uh, go. So then uh, with that gone it just pops out relatively easily. Definitely removing the distributor would make the job easier but uh, I wasn't really keen for that. We'll do, do some stuff with the distributor later on. Here I am just scraping up the gasket, getting it uh, out of the way, and also just vacuuming up the crud that falls down into the valley, and I'll also put a, a rag down in there to keep it nice and clean. Okay, I've just set the new gasket in place, just to see how everything lines up. And it's pretty good. Like, I would say the intake port wouldn't be any smaller than say one millimeter than the gasket. Like we're getting into the accuracy of bolting everything up here. Like the, the stuff could move around that much when you bolt it up. Like that is pretty bloody close. So here's our new D port intake manifold. It's the old oval one. So you can see that those ports into the cylinder heads are pretty restrictive, they're quite narrow and they were the wrong shape really. Um, it almost looks like the cylinder head was sitting at about there. Taking that information over here to our new D port uh, style intake and set the manifold gasket on. Okay, I have now marked out where I'm going to trim to get these to all line up. Now you can see I'm not going to go all the way to the gasket. The gasket is actually slightly larger than I need. Um, probably goes to show that the cylinder heads haven't been ported out fully, um, but they didn't look too bad. Definitely the ports on these cylinder heads look a lot nicer than this. So we can definitely get this to line up a whole bunch better. You can sort of see that all of these ones need material taken out of this side and on the other side it's kind of the same it all needs taken out of that back side so possibly like the core shifted or something during the casting process and that's why we're sort of out to this edge here on one but we've still got plenty of material um, on the other. Okay, these are the two carbide burrs I'll use to do the porting and uh, this one here, the coarse one, is great for removing that sort of bolt material at the start. This one here can be good for maybe some finer work where you want to be careful not to take too much off. Um, so I'll probably use this one for tidying up um, at the very end and I'll use this one just to rough out at the start the shape. And away we go with the porting. You can see it doesn't actually take too long. I think it took about 20 minutes to do one side of the uh, intake for a first pass. Uh, then I came back and did a second pass later on. 
Um, once I'd sort of double checked it with the intake manifold gasket, sat it on the head and had a good look. I didn't film all of that, um, but yeah, I did take two stabs at it. You can see now that we've got it opened up, looks like a fair bit more air will get through there. And there's the other side yet to be ported and really just goes to show um, how restrictive even though we've got the right intake manifold now for the engine so the port shape's correct there's still a bit of restriction there and here I am just finishing up the last one And here we've got the final result, opened up to uh, pretty much match the size of the gasket. I uh, haven't gone all the way out like real precisely because the ports on the heads are ever so slightly smaller than the gasket anyway. So if I um, went to the nth degree, making it like exactly the same size as the gasket, I wouldn't actually achieve anything. I found the width was pretty good, but they were just ever so slightly shorter. So I pretty much made the width the same, but not quite as high. And that's something that I can fix uh, one day when I get the heads off. But for now, heads are staying on. And uh, yeah, these line up pretty good now. You know, we've taken out a lot of material. Um, so they're going to flow a hell of a lot better, for sure. Um, I guess a couple of pointers when you're doing this you don't want to just you know V it at the very end like I've opened them up all the way down and in um, to keep the cross-sectional area the same the whole way through now the little bit on the inside here um, you can't get the die grinder in there so you can't do that but feeling it it feels like it's actually quite a lot larger than this final little piece of the port here so I was happy just to sort of go in and around the bend and then it feels like it's actually quite open in there opened up all down through there tried to give it a nice radius flowing into those as well not just open it up and leave a square edge actually roll it around sort of make it look like a bit a bit like a trumpet Okay, I've uh, given that a bit more of a scrape, a wipe down and a clean out to make sure none of the crud's fallen down into the engine. And now we're ready to reassemble this engine with the new intake. So what I'm going to do is I've got myself a little bit of a gasket maker. Uh, we'll put some beads of silicon um, anywhere around where uh, those coolant galleries were. I'm not worried about putting them around the intakes themselves. I'm pretty happy that they'll seal um, pretty decent. But I'm not so confident with well, these water galleries just because they have pitted a wee bit over the years. Um, they're not real bad, but I think a little bit of RTV to be on the safe side. And we'll also put a little bit in this area here. Um, and that's an area they're pretty prone to leak into. So yeah, both there and around the front there. So let's get into it. Okay, so just so I get a chance to make sure that uh, there's no obstructions with the gasket around the ports, the first step I'm gonna do is to sit the intake on and uh, nip it up, let that uh, bottom side of the gasket cure and should sort of stick it in place uh, then the plan is to pop the intake back off 
and just check that I'm happy with uh, all of this because there's a chance I'll trim some of the gasket out of the way around those ports um, just to make sure that it's not blocking them. So I think the next step is to uh, sit the intake on. Okay, see down there, it's looking pretty good, but I did notice uh, this side here is actually sitting slightly low and this side is slightly high and um, the thing that really I noticed was this little bit of gasket here, loose. So I've tightened down the far side of the manifold um, a bit much and this side not enough. So I'm going to back the bolts off on the far side and tweak these ones down here to see if I can get it to skew over. Uh, if I can, since the gasket's lining up pretty sweet and I'm pretty happy I'm not going to have to um, rejig any of that, I may actually loosen it off, put a little bit of sealant here and then um, assemble it, do final assembly. Yeah, screw it, let's do that. See, there's a little bit of pitting around these water ports, so that's why I wanted to put a bit of gasket girl on this manifold as well. There we go, so the final gluing down now. This is where you want a reasonably clean drop so you don't just smear it everywhere. So I'm trying to get it in around the distributor and then drop it straight down. Oh, bullseye. Oh, when a plan comes together. And now we're really just into the final assembly. So tighten it all down, keeping an eye on that I'm doing it evenly to make sure I don't have that same gap as last time. You can see that lines up pretty well now. So before we were off by millimetres, you know, three, four millimetres we took out of there. So now we're more or less lined up. So pretty happy with that. So I popped the carby back on and called the job done. There's still a couple of fittings and the thermostat housing to do, but I need to go get a new thermostat, so we'll end this video off there. Job done. So there we have it. I have ported out the D-port intake manifold, the manifold that suits the cylinder heads on my car. Got those lining up much better than the original uh, mismatched O-port intake I was running. And I'm pretty confident it might actually see some, you know, noticeable gains on the track. It'll be interesting to tell um, because we might be talking, you know, a few percent horsepower gain. Um, but I sort of think the cross-sectional area we've increased those supports by is probably in the range of 30%. Now, I'm not expecting 30% more horsepower than previous, but, you know, we might see 10 and we could notice that. So... It'll be interesting to see uh, what actually happens when we take this car back out on track. So, thanks a lot for watching. Hope you learned something. I certainly did. I hadn't mucked around with the two different types before. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next one. You might notice the door of a car is missing. So uh, yeah, tune in on the next one and you'll find out why. <laughs> thanks for watching.